Hello class and welcome to this NES golf walkthrough right here on Video Games 101 by way of Let's Play with Briggins. I'm your instructor, Professor Briggins, and we're in summer school right now, so I thought it'd be a great time to dust off this very early title for the NES in golf and, and hit the links. We've got some very helpful tips. Blaze especially has outdone himself today, I have to say. We'll touch on that after the intro, but... Uh, if you're going for par on the whole course, I'm going to give this game a 5 out of 10. Not the easiest. This equates to throwing your controller across the room. Probably when your swing gets away from you and your ball goes into the, the water hazard. But as I said, Blaze has a godsend for this game. It's really going to help us out. So uh, let's run the intro. We'll see you on the other side. Alright, the opening options here are pretty straightforward. We can do stroke play alone with a friend, no jokes please, or match play with a friend. So if we take a look at the controls now, you can change your clubs with up or down, we can aim left and right. B is not even used, how simple is that? It's all about tapping A. Hit it once to start your swing, then hit it all the way to the left to get maximum power. And then to the white, that's your impact. So if you hit it early, it's going to go to the right. If you hit it late, it's going to go to the left. So it's your slice and your hook, respectively. So if you want to think of it in terms of direction, just think of it backwards. If you go beyond the white to the right, your ball is going to go left. And if you hit it early and it's to the left of the white, your ball is going to slice and go right. So we can use this to adjust our shots as we take a look at the Briggs notes now. First, follow this guide, particularly Blaze's bit that we're going to talk about in a minute. Adjust for the wind. Pretty obvious. It's going to carry your ball one way or the other. Get a feel for the clubs and distance. Again, Blaze has that. As I just said, use the hook and slice to adjust. And finally, know that sand affects your balls by only giving you 45% power or distance that your club would normally give you. Now, I know you're thinking, Professor, how do I know what kind of distance a club gives me to begin with? That's where my friend Blaze comes in. Blaze, what do you got for us? All right, I busted out the protractor, the calculator. I crunched the numbers. These are, on average, with perfect additions, the maximum distances each club will take your ball with a perfect hit. Few things to mention, I did this with no wind, perfect conditions, so you need to adjust accordingly if the wind's coming against you, uh, if it's going with you, left or right. All that, take that into consideration. Secondly, the game does not update the distance to the cup. You'll probably notice with each subsequent shot you take. Later golf games did that. That was nice. They don't do it in this one. So you have to kind of uh, take an educated guess, uh, estimating how far you are from the pin after a shot to make your club choice accordingly. Uh, one more thing to mention is that you could do a super shot with the one wood gives you an extra 35 meters. Uh, in the instruction book, unaccountably, they say you can drive the ball 305 yards with a super shot. Not the case, maybe with some wind. Now I'll admit, uh, we're working in meters here and the manual unaccountably is talking in yards when the game itself deals in meters. Even with the conversion, you can't get 305 yards with no wind, but with some wind and a super shot, you could probably drive it that far, but I digress. And uh, one last thing to mention, doesn't matter where, you, uh, where you're where you hitting the ball from, it always gives the same uh, distances right here. So there is no rough in this game. It's just whether you're hitting from the tee or the fairway, it's all fairway. It all gives you the same. The one exception is the bunker. When you're hitting from the sand, you will do 45% on average, roughly, of what the numbers I have crunched here for each club are. So... Keep that in mind, uh, there's really no penalty to using a one wood or any wood in the sand. You'll get, still get that full drive, just 45%. As I said, the same thing applies to every club, but there you go. My club guide for NES Golf. Good luck. All right, thank you very much, Blaze. Excellent guide. As far as I know, maybe the only one that exists for the clubs in this game. And uh, actually... 
You know what, let's pull that back up. I'm going to be keeping this up throughout the duration of this class, as it really does help us out here. And are we on the green? No, so we just need something really light to tap. Just get a quick tap with the 9-iron, and that's setting us up pretty well. And then the putter, it's not really much we can use the guide for. Just know that, yeah, with a, a strong putt, you can send that ball going a little over 100 feet, basically, because it's, it's almost the same as yards, so it's about 3 feet to a meter. And we have to eyeball it at this point. I'm going to say it's about 170 meters. I'm going to go with the 4-iron. Put a little slice on it because it's hard to hit that it's hard to land on the green if you go straight for it because it's narrow on that part, but let's get our first fluff fact about NES Golf now with Fluff. NES Golf was designed by none other than Shigeru Miyamoto, and along with Super Mario Brothers, The Legend of Zelda, Baseball, Soccer, Mahjong, and Tennis, this was one of the first seven games released for the Famicom. Yeah, 1984, this is going back. This is, uh, the... The earliest of the early days here. Now we can we can go around it here. Again, as Blaze said, anything that's not just fairway is out of bounds, essentially. There is no rough. So with a good shot, we can land right there in that little grove around the trees. Now I'd say, again, we're about 170 out, so let's go with the four iron, I guess. Yeah, I meant to slice that a little bit, too. Let's just go with a, a pitching wedge here. And just a little tap. And that's not a bad lie. And the greens are pretty straightforward. The, uh, the down arrows are signifying that the green is sloping down, so we need to aim a little bit above it. And that was a good tap right there. Yeah, a lot of the, uh, the putting just comes down to feel, since the distances are not as obvious. Three wood's a good way to start off this hole right here. Get yourself right on the green and a nice shot at a birdie here. We're already five under for the first nine. That's not too shabby. And there we go. Yeah, six under for the first nine. That's that's actually really good. I'm, I'm very pleased with that. The club guide is helping here. We're just going to swing long. Got a little bit of wind, but you see our, uh, our hook brought it back. Generally, it's the impact which outweighs the wind, so... Keep that in mind, but let's get another fluff fact now about golf with fluff. The sole programmer for NES Golf was the late Satoru Iwata, whose impressive credits list also include The Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Earthbound, Pokemon, and Super Smash Bros. He also served as Nintendo's fourth president from 2002 until his death in 2015. Nintendo left a touching easter egg to the late Iwata in the code for the Nintendo Switch console. Now, it could only be accessed under very specific conditions, including using a brand new switch which had never been connected to and update it via the internet, manually setting the date to July 11th, the anniversary of his death, and mimicking Awata's famous hand gesture using the Joy-Con's controllers in each hand. The Easter egg and tribute has since been removed via updates, and some have theorized that this is because the hidden game's inclusion was meant to be an omamori. A package containing a written message which you are never meant to open or read. An omamori is meant to serve as a good luck charm, and therefore this game's inclusion on the Nintendo Switch was never meant to be opened or played, but rather a blessing that the developers hid inside the Switch in Awata's honor. That is a beautiful story. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Fluff. I had no I, I never had a Switch, so uh, I never even heard about that, but... Leave it to Nintendo, though, to come up with a clever way like that to honor one of their own's memory, but... So this is where you should be aiming for for your first shot, and if you get it in this vicinity, you can get to the, uh, the final area in one stroke with the, uh, the one wood, rather than having to go around and hit one of these other islands. Not sure how we're getting to these different islands, you don't <laughs> see a boat or anything like that. And just, uh... When we're this close, we don't have to worry too much about the, uh, the slope there. Another birdie. Got to pick those up on the, the five pars as often as we can. 159 yards. Go with the four iron, obviously. Combat the wind. And we left ourselves with a more than manageable putt here. It's going down to the left, so we just need to put a little more muscle on it, aim a little bit up, and there's our birdie. Ten under. Having the round of my life right now. This is going quite well. 
At hole 15, I do not recommend trying to go straight for the hole here. Instead, use the one wood, get a good swing. You might want to aim a little bit more to the left. Yes, we had the wind kind of helping us out there, but we were also fighting it, so I think in most conditions you can hit that in one shot. Take a little bit off our 5-iron, and look at that beautiful lie. That's sort of what I'm talking about. You get a feel for these clubs the more you play. The club guide from Blaze helps you to get a, a just the starting basis of what you can get out of these clubs, but then, you know, you, you start to get a little bit more inventive. Be your own caddy and, uh, you know, decide which club and uh, how much power to use in different situations and just sort of piece it together. Beautiful. But yeah, this is always the... Oh, look at that. <laughs> Surprised we didn't hold that from the... Uh, from that last shot, that would have been something. But yes, the, uh, the, the courses we're taking, or the routes we're taking, the angles on these shots, that's what we generally recommend as far as uh, replicating this. There's only the 18 holes, there's not multiple courses like you had in NES Open Golf, which is another great golf game now that I think about it for the NES, but uh, yeah, this one came first, obviously. Didn't quite get to the green in that one shot there, but as long as I can, as long as I don't get any uh, any bogeys at this point, I'm pretty happy. Let's have Fluff take us home now as we enter the last hole with one last fact. The golfer character was identified as Mario in a 1991 gameplay guidebook from Nintendo. This character made a resurgence in 2008's Wii title, Captain Rainbow, which featured a number of lesser-known Nintendo characters. In Captain Rainbow, the character was referred to as Osan, which incidentally was one of the generic names Nintendo floated around during the development of Donkey Kong when Mario first made his appearance. Thank you very much, Fluff. Good work today. I like the love for the lesser-known NES characters here. And just want to tap this. Ooh, that was sloppy. All right, our par streak is in jeopardy here. Going to give it enough club to make sure we get there. Oof. Just made it 13 under through 18 holes. That is, that's pretty good. That'll get it done on the, uh, the PGA Tour, I would guess. And uh, yeah, thank you, Blaze. Huge help today with that club guide. And uh, if you haven't done so already, I urge you to consider subscribing to this channel to enroll in these classes. We do one of these classes every single week in the same spot. We'd love to have you enrolled aboard. Leave a like on this video, it really does help us out. And leave a comment. You ever have trouble with this game? And let us know if the, the club guide helped you out. Give it a try. Pick up this game, dust off this, this original NES title from 1984 with Blaze's club guide. And uh, yeah, let us know how it goes in the comments section. But we'll see you next week in the same spot for next week's class. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and comment on this video, and click subscribe if you haven't already, as this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you. And check the description of this video to see what song is playing right now.